Hey you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north, or specifically, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And you know, as I travel across the country, I love all those tiny roadside museums, but every once in a while, I get the urge to take in one of the classic museums, the, the, the massive academic museums. And I'm here at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, and it appears to be quite an institution. I'm looking forward to going inside. I'm looking forward to you following me. Now this is a true highlight. This diorama here. In 1867, it was previously displayed in Paris. And you can just see all that's going on here. We have a man on a camel being attacked by a lion right there. So another lion that's been shot and dead. So I guess this lion's intention is pure revenge. Just look at the, the, the agony on that camel's face. But this, uh, this piece holds quite a secret because in 2016 they uh, they did some x-rays on this man right here and they found that he has a real human skull in his head there was a the, the the model of his face was based around a real human skull they don't know whose skull it is where it came from but it, yes a, a a man made of man parts i do love the taxidermy in these glass boxes and that's very Victorian museum look to it. So, little woodpecker right there. Thought this was taxidermy at first, but this eagle, this giant life-size eagle, is actually made out of ivory. A timber rattler there. I think he's thinking about eating a little birdie right there. Got mama bird up there. And the baby birds are graphically eviscerating a frog, huh? I just, I kind of feel bad, bad for the frog. It's a butterfly wall. This is actually really interesting. It's a rhinoceros hornbill. That is the male right there. And the female, you can see her poking her beak out of there. Uh, to protect her, the male actually imprisons her in a tree trunk. He puts like, that mortar or whatever up so she can't get out. And she relies entirely on him to feed her while uh, she's taking care of their young. That's, that is really, really bizarre and interesting. This gift shop is pretty impressive, basically because it has a T-Rex in the middle. Now if I'm good at uh, identifying my bones, I'm thinking that right there is a seal. Oh, and above these children's books, they have some jars of fun. One of the rarest pieces of taxidermy you'll ever see. It's the taxidermy giant panda. What is a fossil? Good question. Uh, I'm assuming these are fossils. Ah, and here's a Pittsburgh native. This uh, giant salamander skull. Only been one ever found, and it was in Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania marine life back in the day when uh, Pennsylvania was an ocean. Mm. Had these beautiful fish and squid trouncing around. This big thing here, this prehistoric animal, looks like a cross between an alligator and a frog. It's called the Eriops. Feed the dino. Now, we used to think that dinosaurs you know, lived on meat, but uh, this dinosaur lives on Cold hard cash. Looks like we got a genuine paleontologist workshop here. You can see all the little bone bits they're working with. Oh, look at those big ribs. Imagine if you could eat uh, barbecued ribs that were that big. That would be pretty amazing. <laughs> oh, look at this little fun sized mammoth right here. This is a dinosaur called a Sarmian Taurus. They made a 3D model of his head, and, and using that, they were able to make a 3D model of a dinosaur brain. I think that's the closest we'll ever come to seeing a uh, dinosaur brain, of, of course, uh, unless Jurassic Park becomes real. 
igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, metamorphic rocks. This is all like bringing back flashbacks of a particular middle school test. Touch a piece of float copper. Well, you don't gotta ask me twice. Oh, good float copper. Look at this, this giant, massive crocodile. You know, we always talk about alligators and crocodiles being living dinosaurs. I'd say they're the king of the dinosaurs because they're the only ones that are still around. You know, dinosaurs always biting each other. I think that's why they went extinct. It's actually the first dinosaur acquired by the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. It's a Diplodocus, which is uh, known locally as Dippy. But I think what's even more fascinating is the name of this dinosaur. Full name is actually Diplodocus Carnegie, so named after the actual uh, founders of the museum. That's really amazing. That is a sauropod footprint. Imagine if he stepped in your face. Wow, just look at these monstrous skeleton fish right here. This is some sort of dino porcupine, I guess. Touch the past. Use two fingers to gently touch this piece of dinosaur bone. This T-Rex head is kind of lumpy and weird. Um, so either he just was a lumpy, weird T-Rex, or, you know, having your head lay around for millions of years <laughs> makes your head all lumpy and weird. Okay, this is kind of a mind-blowing moment. This T-Rex here is known as King Rex the first, and there's very good reason for that. This was the first T-Rex discovered. He was, uh, this, this individual T-Rex was given the name of Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is the OG T-Rex. We are looking right now at Mr. T-Rex. The T-Rex that came before all others. I love him so much. Yeah, just me and the uh, first ever T-Rex just hanging out. <laughs> Seriously, does that not... It almost makes me, almost makes me emotional. I like how this guy still has crazy bone eyes. Yeah, you can see that King Rex just tiptoeing through the tulips there. Over here we've got some various skulls of triceratops style dinosaurs. I, you know, you gotta agree, these, these are probably the most metal looking dinosaur skulls. Looks like we got a little prehistoric possum right there. There's a wonderful guide over there and she told me uh, an interesting fact, an answer to a question that I never even thought to ask. It's why are dinosaur bones brown? You know, bones generally being of the white variety. And the answer is that uh, when one of the first dinosaurs was dug up, the, the scientist, um, it started to immediately oxidize. They started to come apart. The air started to destroy it. So he took varnish that he had it and, and varnished the whole bone. And that set the standard. And from that point on, all dinosaur bones were varnished in brown. And the joke she told was that if he had happened to have a can of blue paint, then all dinosaur bones would be blue. Heading into the age of mammals, we see this creature here who is half skeleton and half horse monster. Here's horse evolution. First we start out with this adorable little tiny pony, almost like a little My Little Pony. And then, oh, it turns into like a dog-sized horse. There, and it just keeps getting bigger, really. And there's our finished horse. Just noticed that some of these early mammals had amazing names. Long-legged hell pig. <laughs> Look at hell pig. Coyote-sized bear dog. That's um. That's 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 a confusing name. That's like three animal names in one. Hey, uh, how are you doing, uh, coyote-sized bear dog? 
Here's what a buffalo looks like when you cut off half its uh, skin and remove all its organs. Here's the La Brea Tar Pits out in California. You can see these lions are, are heckling this poor buffalo because he's all stuck in the mud. They're like, <laughs> Yeah, these half animals, they're, they've got a certain creepiness to them. Just, yeah, that's, that's weird. This is Discovery Base Camp. Just slow down, look closely, touch everything. We could, we could touch everything? I could, I could touch this bear? Oh. Good old bear. You're such a good bear. You're such a good bear. Man, I wish I had a pet bear. Oh, you're a good bear. Such a fluffy bear. Yeah, you can just, you can just pick up these owls. Just pick up an owl. How you doing, owl? Nice to meet you. Mind if I carry you around for a bit? Yeah, I guess walk up to this bobcat. Oh, he's a little heavy. I don't think we're picking up him. Yeah, I can't believe they just, they just let you touch the taxidermy. It's amazing. We need more uh, taxidermy petting zoos in the world. Oh, lion. I love lions. Yeah, where else would you do this? You can just like stick your hand in a lion's mouth and just do 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 do. Just hang out, knowing that he won't uh, he won't kill you. Oh, you're such a such a good lion. Such a soft lion. Some folks will never eat a skunk. This is what it looks like when your skull explodes. It's lemur. It looks like he's wearing uh, goggles. Oh, look at the little monkey. Now this is a little creepy. Look at that snake head. Oh my gosh. Hey turtle. These boxes right here is a buffalo box. And uh, let's see, it's it's just, it's filled with buffalo parts. Is that, I think these are his, his, are his horns. Chunk of buffalo fur. Ah. These uh, boxes are just filled with chopped up animals. Oh, look at this cute beaver. He's like begging for table scraps, which would be wood, I guess. Skunks, I, I want a pet skunk. I think mostly the, the point of this is just me figuring out what animals I want to have as pets. Oh, this big alligator skull right here. Oh, oh, let me see. There we go. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this. It's just like taxed every animals of boxes that you can move around and carry. Chaos? Raids. Oh yeah, let's see what's in the possum box. All right. What do we got in the possum box? Oh, there's a little possum footprint there. Little footprints. And there is possum skull. See his little vampire fangs? They have such a small brain cavity. Poor guys. Some insect dioramas. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of these bees. Look at these. These are giant bees. Oh, you don't want you don't want to be stuck. You don't want none of that stinger. Oh, there's a big wall of jars of fun. What do we got floating in these? Looks like a, an iguana. Oh, it's just a bunch of like baby alligators shoved in that jar. I for one welcome our new insect overlords. There's something I'm really fascinated with. The art of the diorama. I've always been a huge fan of taxidermy diorama. Yeah, this is a really unique piece. It's like a, a big bubble. Big glass bubble with, I think those are like pheasants or something in there. Northern ravens. Those are really large. Never more. I always got love the dioramas that are both above and below water. Just a blue goose. Not so blue, but very much a goose. <laughs> there's, there's a red, is <laughs> a, a red-footed um, booby. How are you boobies doing in there? A roseate spoonbill. Really kind of looks like he's been crammed in there pretty tight. Wow. Better swim faster there, little guy. This is the hall. North American wildlife, kind of the traditional style 
uh, taxidermy displays that you see in a lot of these museums. For whatever reason, you could touch that other bear all you wanted, but uh, this bear's off limits for touching. Maybe he's just maybe he's too grumpy. And these, these little cubs here, they're they're really really going at that salmon. That's yeah, it's, a, it's nature. It's how nature works. Back there, the seagull is really excited that he just found this uh, fish head. Here are the mammals of Pennsylvania. See that there's a lot of critters. Oh, excuse me there. Chaos reigns. And where is he? Where, where's the guy we're looking for? There he is. These dramatic scenes of violence and death are always the most fascinating taxidermy display. Here we got this elk. It's being devoured and pulled apart by vultures. Oh, and there's an arrow in him. He was killed by a bow hunter. Oh, this is really interesting. This is a collection of taxidermy that is uh, categorized by how they passed away. This uh, lizard was smashed with a rifle butt in a military tent. Oh, and you can just see the look on his face. He's like, oh, ow. This uh, imperial woodpecker actually extinct due to uh, overhunting from, uh, it was actually from SeaWorld in, in San Diego. This one's super weird, this hellbender, which is a massive salamander, choked to death on a marshmallow. Oh, well, this poor common crackle was stoned to death by school children. No oh, one even calls them out, Boyd Elementary School. Boyd Elementary School. You should be ashamed of yourself. This table here is basically just a massive snake pit. Another rare taxidermy sighting, a bald eagle. Oh, look at that. Angry seal face. You see this amazing display of these like crocodiles as if they were swimming underwater. Oh there's a uh, whatchamacallit, an Eevee. And here we have the world's most uh, unfortunate iguana. Here's a display on some extinct birds. So, you know, it is amazing to see, but very sad uh, to know that they'll never be back. The Carolina parakeet, of course, most notorious uh, extinct birds. The passenger pigeon, which was once almost like considered a pest, but was killed by man. And uh, the dodo right there, bird that was killed because it had uh, no survival instincts. Okay, this is really cool. These are uh, fictional birds matched up with their uh, real-life counterparts. There's Zazu from The Lion King, next to a real hornbill. There's, there's Toucan Sam with a dead toucan. Because <laughs> they maybe picked a toucan that wasn't so dead looking. <laughs> then there's Owl from Winnie the Pooh. There's a, there's a real owl. We have a Tweety Bird next to a dead Tweety Bird. Again, why did they make them look so dead? It looks like the fake Tweety Bird murdered a real Tweety Bird. Here's the Roadrunner with a real Roadrunner. Of course, the cartoon Roadrunner is like huge. It's almost like an emu or something. There is Opus, the penguin. The real penguin gazing over his shoulder. Ugh, that's creepy. Wait a minute. Mummies? Where where am I? I thought I was in a natural history museum. They have the air conditioning cranked up in this section. I always love when they do that. The ultimate showdown. Man versus walrus. I always wanted to live in an igloo when I was a kid. Let's see what it's like. Oh, yeah. here's the igloo dwellers. They're just uh, butchering white foxes and 
collecting their blood. The ultimate showdown. Man versus delicious bass. It's our sled dogs. So yes, I love traditional museums just as much as I love roadside museums. Some really fascinating stuff in there. The first T-Rex ever discover, the namesake of all other T-Rexes. And plus, uh, the uh, the ability to just, just fondle taxidermy, is that, that impresses me <laughs> in and of itself. So much good stuff here. But uh, yeah, check it out if you're in Pittsburgh. Pretty nice, pretty nice little museum they got here. Uh, if you like the other museums I've been to, as well as other roadside attractions, amusement parks, and whatnot, check the interactive map in the description. It'll show you where I've been, and you can tell me where I need to go. Also, if you'd like to help contribute to the channel, consider buying a t-shirt. Consider donating to Patreon. A donation of $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. But for now, this one's in the bag.